Hi everyone. It feels like ages since I last did a video. So this one's well overdue. Anyway, my subscribers will probably remember a time when I did a video on lithium-ion battery capacity checkers or cell capacity checkers and the idea was that you'd get a lithium-ion cell you put it in this little um, uh, project if you like and it would tell you the capacity basically it would drain it and tell you the capacity and therefore you could tell how useful the cell was pretty useful um, but this video is you know it's slightly different to that this one is going to be one or two videos instead of a series and this is going to be slightly different this is for lead acid now the thing is with lead acid the capacity is generally far far larger than a lithium cell I mean they're bigger to start with they're much bigger than a lithium cell so you know it's a slightly different thing the principles are the same but it's slightly different anyway so I'm going to show you around this project and then I'm going to tell you how I did it so let's be clear now what exactly is this it's a lead acid battery capacity tester or checker and basically you um, you can check lead acid in different ways there are two main ways but one of them is by putting a load on it and this is that method this puts a load on a battery and um, sees how long the battery lasts and therefore tells you the battery capacity now there's more to it which I'll explain in a minute but that's basically what this is it's um, a thing where you hook up a lead acid battery it does its thing and in the end it tells you the capacity of the battery so I'll show you around first I'll have to do this freehand more often because I actually quite like it anyway first things first I've got a voltage divider and the voltage divider has two high power resistors uh, I don't know the exact resistance at the moment but because this is fed off 12 volts you know it needs to have a bit of that voltage just resisted off a little bit so I've got 50-50 ratio there which means that if 12 volts comes into the feed then 6 volts will be in between the two resistors and that goes straight into the V-in pin of the Arduino Nano um, so as to supply it the voltage now we've got a Nano right there I actually sell some Nanos now in my eBay shop, which I think I'll put the link in the description. There's absolutely no pressure to buy though, you know. And only buy if you're in the UK, because I'm only selling to UK at the moment. I've got two tactile switches there. That's for stop and go. I've got a MOSFET. It's an IRZL44N, if I remember rightly. Basically, it's, a, it's just an N-channel MOSFET. A logic level one. You could actually use a transistor as well, but I'm using a MOSFET. Got another voltage divider, and that's a 5k and a 10k brown, black, orange. That's 10k, I think. Yeah, so you've got a what would the ratio be there? Uh, 2 to 1. So, yeah, got that there. So 12 volts in, 2 to 1 ratio, which means that no more than 5 volts should go into the A0 pin. I've got a capacitor now. I can't remember why I did that capacitor. Let me just see where it goes. Oh, okay, right, it will be a, a stabilising capacitor to stabilise the uh, analogue input. I've got an LCD panel there, which is not looking too healthy, and that's because one of these is loose. Let me see which one it is. Yep, one of these is loose. Uh, that's the LCD panel, which will show the output of the um, the artificial intelligence, if you like. Um, so there I've got the time, the amount of milliamps, Oh, have I? Yeah, that's the amount of amperage which is currently flowing, and that's the voltage of the battery. Now, I'll put this on in a second, and you can actually see it. So, I've also got a high power resistor, and this really is a high power one, not like that one there. This is a heavy duty thing with a huge heatsink uh, around it. Not only has it got a huge heatsink around it, I've also super glued an even bigger one to it. Um, basically that's a CPU fan super glued and on there I've got a well basically a CPU fan and this is because this uh, high power resistor here generates a hell of a lot of heat now as you can see here it's actually an 8 ohm it's actually 8 and a half ohm but it says 8 on it 100 watt um, power resistor 
So yeah, it's it's not a lightweight thing. It gets very very hot and it does need cooling. Hence why I've got this this stuff on it. Now the wiring I'll go into in a bit. Okay, but essentially that's all you need to uh, to do it. Okay, so we've got an idea of how this works in terms of circuitry, but how does it actually work? I mean, so we're draining the battery. How will that give us the capacity? Um, and actually, it's a little bit more complicated than what you probably expect. So, in order to find out the capacity, you need to basically put a constant load on it for an amount of time. So, for example, um, a, a standard car battery might be something like, um, let me just put this in, might be something like 52 amp hour. And that basically means. Uh, very 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 simply 52 amps for one hour so 52 amp hour battery in very simple terms is 52 amps for one hour before the battery runs out or you could also say it the other way you could also say it's uh, one amp for 52 hours sorry 52 not amps hours 52 hours so 52 amp hour, 52 amps for one hour, or one amp for 52 hours would be a 52 amp hour battery. Now, in reality, it's not as simple as this either way. Um, because in reality, if you were to put 52 amps on a battery, for, it wouldn't last one hour. Even if it was a 52 amp hour battery, it wouldn't. Because the more heavy the load is, the more stress and pressure is on the battery. It basically won't deliver. Now if you do it lower like this, you're more likely to, to hit the target. And in some circumstances with an new battery, you may even exceed the target. It just depends. So basically that's what it is. Um, so when somebody says 52 amp hour, it basically means that. Now, it's not as simple as that um, for a few different reasons. Now, it's okay saying, you know, you could put one amp on it and then measure how many hours. I mean, you could do it that way. But in reality, it's not so easy to to keep one amp um, constantly applied to a battery. I mean, let's say we had a, a bulb or something, which was one amp, right? One amp bulb. Wow, my spelling is terrible. Um, one amp bulb. And let's say we put the one amp bulb on and then we let it go and then count how many hours. It wouldn't work. And that's because it's one amp at say 12 volts for example but then what happens when it's 11 volts you know so yeah at 11 volts that could be 0 0.9 amps and you wouldn't really know unless you were able to test it in more depth so it poses a problem and what we need to do in order to get around the problem is have an understanding of Ohm's law so if I just draw a triangle here uh, we could plug in some values and see what happens. Now, let's say we have 12 volts here, 12 volts, E, I, R, and we've got amperage and resistance. So this is E, which means voltage, I, which is amperage, and R, which is resistance. Um, you know, how can we get around this? Let's say we have a constant resistance of let's say 10 amp, uh, sorry, ohms 10 ohms what sort of amperage would flow through 12 divided by 10 is 1.2 amps so that's what would flow 12 volts here 10 ohms 1.2 amps 12 divided by 10 is 1.2 and this ohms law uh, works is reliable. Now if we were to drain the battery a little bit and we were to say 11 volts what would it be now? 11 volts divided by 10 is 1.1 amp and this is the problem this is what you're up against right the voltage isn't constant when you drain the battery and one of these isn't constant either you know, 
it's not so straightforward. So what can you do? Okay, so this is what you can do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a high power resistor, which is a good value. So what I mean by good value, let me just do this again. Yeah, in fact, let me just change the page. So what I mean by good value is 1.1 amps. That would be a good value, you know. But if I change that to 1 ohm, then we'd then be drawing 10 amps, which wouldn't really be a good value. You don't want to be drawing 10 amps on a battery that's potentially 20 amp hour or something. That would be ridiculous. It would be too heavy load, you know, too much of a heavy load to get a proper result. Now, for me, I'm looking for around just a few amps, you know. You don't want anything too small uh, so that it just takes forever to drain. At the same time, you don't want something too big that drains too quick. So, let's go back to this. So, I've looked at what resistors I have available, and I have a resistor that's 8.5 ohms. It actually says 8 ohms on it, but I've measured it to 8.5 ohms. Um, so, this is going to be a constant. This In the equation, this will never change. It will always be 8.5 ohms, which means that, you know, these are the two factors that could change. Now, if this were, say, fully charged, and it was 14 volts, what would the current be? Let me just work this out. So, calculator, where's my calculator? Calculator, 14 divided by 8.5 is 1.64. So, 1.64 amps would flow through, right? And let's say it's flat. Let's say it was flat. Let's say, uh, let's say 11 volts, which 11 volts isn't flat, it's actually more than flat, but let's just do it anyway. So 11 volts divided by 8.5 is 1.29 amps, right? And that's suitable. That's that's a fairly good amount of resistance for this. Okay? Now I've also got, as you can see, a high power one resistor. Now I don't know if you can see it here. Let me just bring it over. It's a high power one. You see how thick it is and it's got this heat sink around it. It's actually a 100 watt resistor. Now how can you um, know how much wattage the resistor needs to be? Well, get your highest voltage here that the battery could be, in other words the Vmax, which is around about 14 volts for lead acid, and get the highest amount of current and multiply one by the other. Because voltage multiplied by amperage equals wattage. So I just got my calculator again, I mean, I've got a rough idea what it'll be, it'll be about 25 or something. So 14 multiplied by 1.64 equals 23, right, 23 watts. So it's going to dissipate 23 watts of power in this particular situation, right? So 23 watts of power, I need a resistor that can handle 23 watts. The one I've got can handle 100 watts, so it's fine. Nevertheless, I've got the heat sink on it anyway, because it's going to get red hot. And, um... That's that, that's how I selected the resistor, okay? Now, going into even more depth, specifically, how will this work? Right, what I will do, that calculation, which I've just done there, that will be calculated every second, okay? So, to start with, it'll be 14, we know the resistance, so therefore we can work out the amperage, okay? So it'll get the current voltage, and that'll be via the A0 pin. It already knows this, so 1 divided by the other equals the amount of amperage. Now, because we know the amount of amperage flowing through, we can then top them up, and in the end, do another calculation in order to get the amount of amp hours. So just to try and illustrate this now, so let's say we are taking records every second. Let's say we get 14 volts, and uh, we, we know this, we work it out to be 1.64 amps. Then the next second, we work it out again, and it's 1.63 amps. And the next second, we work it out again, and it's 1.62 amps that's flowing through. We work it out again, and it's still 1.62. And we work it out again, and it's 1.62. We do this every second. Basically, at the end, what we can do, well, not necessarily at the end, we could do it as a uh, continual process, we would add all of these together, yep, so that we could add them together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, roughly eight, right? And that's the amount of amp seconds. Eight amp seconds. 
And if you divide that by uh, 3,600 it will be, divide by 60, divide by 60, that will give you the amount of amp hours. And that's how I'm going to do it. 